Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve, solve some problems that you will find on page number 876. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, and if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, let's get going. Number 23, it says, after the ball was dropped, after the ball was dropped, how many times was the ball at the height of two feet? How many times was the ball at the height of two feet? Which is, which is not the same as saying how many times it reaches the height of two feet, which has a different interpretation. It says how many times was it at the height of two feet? And the graph that they give us looks something like this. So here we have the time, here we have the height, and I'll do the I'll do the best that I can do and look something like this. It reaches about half the height each time. It reaches about half the height each time. And so on and so forth. And if you look at the graph yourself, it's book is right book is in right front book is right in front of you, or at least I hope it is. If you look at it carefully, and you will see that uh, two feet is somewhere here. Right here, somewhere here is two feet. So how many times is the ball at the height of two feet? Well, let's count them, shall we? How many, how many times it reaches the height of two feet? How many times is it at two feet? Well, here's one time. This is the first time when it reaches the height of two feet. Oh, here's the second time. It reaches the height of two feet right here. And it reaches again at the height of two feet on the way down. There we go, three times. The answer is three. It reaches the height of two feet here, here, and here. The answer is C. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 24. Number 24 is a quite straightforward very very simple question. It is simply asking us the percentage increase, the percentage increase from seventy-five seventy five seventy-four to seventy-nine eighty-seven. I can't read my handwriting to 79.86. I don't know why I have written 86, 87 in my notes. 79.86. Well, let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Let's erase this thing. We no longer need it. So, 75, 74. Let's just pretend that it is approximately 76. Well, actually, there is no such thing as pretending because there is no need to pretend it is approximately 76. Think it, think it, think it in terms of money. $75.74 is approximately $76. And this is approximately $80. So from 76 to 80, that's a difference of 4. 4 divided by 80, we know 8 divided by 80 is 10%. And therefore, 4 divided by 80 is exactly 5%. It's exactly 5%. But when we're doing the percentage change, we are going from 76 to 80, not the other way around. Our point of reference is 76, which means the denominator needs to be 76, not 80. And if the denominator is lower than 80, 80 would have been exactly 5%, but because it is 76, this percentage is going to be far greater than 5%. It's going to be far greater than 5%. When I say five gre far, far greater, I don't mean 6, 7, or 8%. I mean it's greater than 5%. It is not going to be, it is not going to be 
or 5.2 percent. They are just they are just too small because there's a big difference between 80 and 76. The only other option that we have is 5.4. And if I were taking the exam right now myself, this would be the end of the story. I will move. I will pick 5.4 and move on with my merry life. But just to convince you that it is actually 5.4. We're going to do a little bit more work just for learning purposes. And again, I'm not going to do the work with 5.4% because that's a lot of work. Let's just see what 5.5 works out to be, 5.5%. So let's begin, 5.5%, okay? 5.5% of this amount. The answer is, in fact, 5.4. So we're dealing with 75, 74. Okay, stay with me in the story. 10% of this amount. 10% of this amount. When we're doing 10%, all we have to do is move the move the decimal. So it's 75, 74 becomes seven dollars and fifty-seven cents. Seven dollars and fifty-seven cents, just approximately, because we left out that four tenth of a penny. Let's just pretend. Let's just pretend it's seven sixty. So that's ten percent. If ten percent is seven sixty, that means five percent. Five percent is going to be half of that. Think of think of seven sixty at six, six and one sixty. Think of 760 at 6 plus 160, if it makes it easier for you. Half of 6 is 3, and half of 160 is 80 cents. There we go. In other words, 5% is approximately 380. You with me so far? So we already have 5%. Now let's do 0.5%. 0.5% is going to be tenth of 5%. A tenth of this amount is 38 cents. As you can see, $3.80. One tenth of three dollars eighty cents, thirty-eight cents. I'm just going to pretend it is forty cents. We're just going to pretend it is forty cents. Think of this in terms of. So here we go. Let's add them up. Five percent, five percent, and half percent. So we're going to get four dollars and twenty cents. Four dollars and twenty cents. Let's add that to the original amount. The original amount is right here: seven sixty, seventy-five, seventy-four, which we're pretending as seventy-five, seventy-four, which we're pretending as. And it's 75, let's leave it 74 if you like, and 420, which is 5.5%. This is 5.5%, approximately 5.5%. Let's add them up. This is a 4, so we get a 4, 9, 9, there we go. 79.94, instead of 79.94, it is 79.86. And the reason is because it is not 5.5%, it's 5 .5%, It's not 5.5%, it's 5.4%. The answer is D. But like I said, all of that work was unnecessary. You should be able to see right away that it's not going to be 5.1 or 5.2. They are too small. You're dividing by 76 as opposed to 80. That makes a big difference. That was number 24. Number 25 gives us a function, function f, which we are told is linear, which is very important to keep in mind. In other words, it always goes up by the same amount each time. x goes up by one unit, the value of the function goes up by the exact same amount because the slope is constant. And we are told, here are the values of x and here are the values of the function. We are told that when x is 0, the value of the function is negative 2. When x is 2, the value of the function is 4. When x is 6, the value of the function is 16. And the question is, what's the value of the function when x equals 3? Let's find out, shall we? Because it's a linear function, the slope is constant, let's see what we can do. When it goes from 0 to 2, that's an increase of 2. When x goes up by 2, the value of the function goes up by 6. For each two units, for each two units increase in x, y goes up by 6 units, which means for every 1 unit increase in x, y should go up by 3 units. In other words, when x is, let's do it in a different color. In other words, when x is equal to 1, it will go by 3 units, from negative 2 to 3 more units, negative 2 to 0 is 2 units, and then 1 more unit. It goes to positive 1. When x is 3, it goes from 4 to 7. When x is 4, it goes from 7 to 10. When x is 5, it goes from 10 to 13. 
and when it goes to six, it goes up by all the three units, that, which is uh, which is given to us. We are not interested in any of this thing. We are simply interested in what's the value of the function when x is equal to three, which is right here. When x is equal to three, the value of the function is seven. The value of the function is seven, and there is answer choice b. The value of the function is seven when x when x is equal to three because the slope is three. It goes up by three three units each time. Let's see what we can do in twenty six. Twenty six on the is on the next page. We are told that the gear A rotates at 100 revolutions per minute. Question is, question is, what's the RPM, the revolution per minute of gear C? Let's see what we have here. We know that we're given something like this. A, B, and C. A, we are told, is, has 20 teeth. B, we are told, has 60 teeth. And C, we are told, has 10 teeth. I'll have to erase all of this soon because I need the room. What that means is that, you see, because, because these are gears, I'm going to show you with my fingers if it helps you. These are gears, which means they have to lock each other. Each, each of them has to lock each other. So each one tooth of this one has to lock with one tooth of that one, go on and so on and so, so forth. You understand what it means. So what happens is that, because this guy has 60 teeth, this guy has 60 teeth, what that means is that for every one revolution, for every one revolution that B makes, A, A needs to make A needs to make three revolutions. Why does A need to make three revolutions for every one revolution B makes? Because B has three times as many teeth. So they interlock, each, each tooth interlocks with each tooth of this one. It has 60 teeth. So every one revolution that B makes is a much bigger gear. A has to rotate three times to make one revolution of this one. In other words, the ratio of A to B is that for every, every one revolution that B makes, A has to make three, three revolutions. And we are told that A is going at the speed of, no, it's not 1000, I believe it's 100. We are told that A is, is rotating at the speed of 100 revolution per minute. Let's put that in here. A is rotating at 100 revolution per minute. The question is, in that case, what's the, what's the speed of gear B? Let's solve this thing somewhere. I don't know where. We're going to have to find the room. Let's raise all of this thing. I need the room. So, let's do it here. X, bring the X up here and bring the 3 down here. Oh, we can, we can continue here actually. X is equal to, bring the X up here and bring the 3 down here. 100 over 3. There we go. So that part is done. We're done with, we're done with B. Now let's take a look at B and C. B has 60 teeth and, and C has 10 teeth, only 10 teeth. So now, when we're looking at gear B and gear C, what happens is that for every one revolution that B makes, for every one revolution that B makes, because it has six times as many teeth, the poor guy C, the poor guy C has to go around six, six times. In other words, the ratio of B to C is for every one revolution that B makes, C has to make six. And we know B makes this many revolutions, 100 over 3. Let's put that in here. 
question is how many revolutions does C make? We, we cannot do this thing because algebra is a language. It's a language and just like any language, symbols have meanings. We can no longer use X in the context of this problem because we only use up the letter X to represent the number of revolution gear A was making. We cannot use the same, same symbol. So being creative that we are, we're going to use Y because it's a different quantity, different quantity, different concept. Let's solve for Y, shall we? Again, bring the Y up here, bring the Y up here and 6 up there. So it's going to be 100 over 3 times 6. There we go. We're done. 3 is going to cancel out with 6 2 times and there you go. It's just Y is equal to 100 times 2. Y is equal to 200. Question is, how many revolution, how many revolution does C make for every 100 revolution does that A makes? The answer is 200. Now, having done all this thing, now I'm going to tell you the nasty part. We really didn't have to make it so complicated. We really didn't have to turn this into a drama. There was a quicker way. The quicker way was this. This guy has 20 teeth. This guy has 20 teeth. Which means, which means, if this guy is going 100 revolution, because it has 20 teeth, and this guy only has 10 teeth, it has half as, teeth, many, half as many teeth, for every one revolution that this guy makes, this guy has to make two revolutions. So every 100 revolution this guy makes, this guy has to make 200 revolution. That's what it is. Which is exactly what we found. This middle part really doesn't play any role in our story. We didn't have to go through it. Okay? I just didn't want to jump from here to here because I was afraid it might confuse some of you. That's all. The answer is 200. That was 26. Let's take a look at number 27. Number 27 says that we have this equation 2x squared minus 6x plus 2y squared plus 2y equals 45. We are told that this is an equation of a circle. The question simply is what is its radius? This equation that we see here in front of us is an equation of a circle. What is the what is the radius of this circle? Let's find out, shall we? The equation of a circle, as you know, is simply x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. We have to present this thing in this form, what is, which, is no, which is what is known as completing the square. This square has to be completed. It has to be presented in this form, x minus some quantity of plus some quantity is whole square, same thing here with y, and when we do that, we're going to have some, some other quantity here, and, this, and the square root of that quantity, we can put it here, and that will be our radius there. Do you understand? Let's do that, shall we? I'm going to erase this thing, we no longer need it. Let's just pick up from here, so I don't have to rewrite it. This is 2, this is 6, this is 2, this is 2. Why don't we divide this whole thing by 2, this side, and bring the 2 to the other side. If you divide the entire equation by 2, what we end up is x squared minus 3x plus y squared, plus 2 drops out, plus y is equal to 45 over 2. Because we divided the whole thing by 2. Now we can start the process of completing the square. So let's do that, shall we? So this is just going to be x squared minus 2 times x times, we're writing this as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. The question is, what is going to be the b? The b, what the b is going to be is dictated by what we need here. We need negative 3x. We already have negative, we need 3x. So we need to put 3 here and get rid of this 2 by dividing it by 2. The 2 drops out and we end up with negative 3x right there. Plus the b squared which is 3 over 2 whole squared. I'm afraid I may have used up too much space. I might run out of room as we go through the blackboard. I hope it doesn't happen. Because I like to put the whole thing in one shot. 
just do the y. Why we rewrite it so that I don't have to worry about it. So this rewrite is instead of yapping, x squared minus 2 times x over 3 over 2, 2 cancels out, plus 3 over 2 whole squared, that part is done. Now let's work on this part. So we have y squared plus 2 times y, and then second quantity, middle quantity is just y. Here we have 2y, so we have to get rid of this 2. We're going to get rid of this 2 by multiplying it by 1 half. That's our b plus b squared equals to 45 over 2. Now we have to undo everything that we have done. We have x squared here, we have x squared here, we have this 2 are going to cancel out, and this 2 are going to cancel out, and 3x, negative 3x we have here. This is the part we introduced. It's not there. We introduced it. Since we added this quantity 9 over 4, we have to add the same thing here, 9 over 4, to, to undo this part. This, to, undo, to undo this part is this part. We are adding it to both sides, so it, 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 it negates it. Same thing here. We added that part, 1 over 4. So we have to add 1 over 4 here as well. And that undo, undoes this part. Enough of the talk. We are not interested we are not interested at all of what happens on this side because we are not interested in finding out what the center of the circle is. We just want to find out the radius. The radius part dicta is dictated from here. So let's, go, let's see what we get there. Okay, let's see what we can get. The problem here is that the problem here is that as we, add, as we start adding up these figures we have a denominator of 2 here and a 4 here and a 4 here. Why don't we make this guy, a denominator of 4 as well, times 2 over 2. There we go. So it becomes 2 times 45 over 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. You see, we're multiplying 45 over 2 by 2 over 2. 2 times 45 is 90. 2 times 45 is 90. And then we got 9 and a 10. 9 and a 10 over 4. And that whole thing is 100 over 4, 100 over 4, One hundred over 4 is 25, 100 over 4 equals 25, which is same as 5 squared, voila, 5 squared, there you go, that's our radius, therefore the radius is equal to 5 r squared. As always I'm worried that these videos tend to be too long and I don't like to do that but that's just the way it is somehow. I don't want to speed up too much. Anyway, I hope it was helpful. If you wish to get hold of me send me an email as I said before at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, we'll pick up from where we left off tomorrow. Okay, bye now.